welcome to episode number six of Running Rants. And I have a very special story to tell you guys today. Before I get to that, we are running in my neighborhood, Stanford, Connecticut. Uh, I wanna do more traveling, but for now, we're just gonna do a little stroll around the park. For today's story, I'm gonna tell you about the longest I've ever stayed awake at, at once. So, no sleeping, no napping, just woke up this day, fell asleep this time. Now, the longest that I've ever stayed awake, this story actually takes place last year, so it wasn't even that long ago. And I'll tell you right now, the longest I stayed awake was for 46 hours, 45 or 46 hours. It's no clickbait, that's the longest I stayed awake for. And here's the story of that time. Just to paint you guys a little picture of how it went down, was last year I was in Wellington, New Zealand. And at the time, I recently met somebody there. The girl's name was Leah. We kicked it off and we hung out all the time. The problem was that she had to leave New Zealand in a month. She was German, English as a second language. So we hang out pretty much that entire month, more or less every day or every other day. This was about towards the end of that month that we had left of hanging out. And that's where this story takes place. Let's start right now at 7 a.m. on Friday. That's when I wake up for work. Now, I will stay away from 7 a.m. Friday until about four o'clock Sunday morning without ever taking a nap or going to sleep. And this is that story. Now, I wake up at 7 a.m. because at the time I was the nanny, I was an au pair, and I was in charge of the kids. So I woke up at seven, made sure they got to school at nine o'clock. I work for those two hours that Friday, get them off to school. Kids get off to school around three, pick them up, hang out with them until six o'clock. And this is Friday. So me and I think a bunch of friends go down to Wellington and we party. So just to give you a basis of distance for this whole story is that I live in a place called Par Par Umu, which is about an hour north of Wellington. It's in Wellington region. Wellington's the capital of New Zealand, but I was still an hour north. I'll put it on the map right over here so you can see that. Because I'm going to be making this trip a bunch in the next few days. So I finish work and I go down. I'm up here at Parapa Umu and I go down to Wellington. I drive about one station down and then I take the train all the way down. It's about an hour drive. I get down there, me and my friends, we kind of party and maybe around 10, 11, we tone it down and we just hang out. Wellington's on the harbor, so yeah, I mean, all of New Zealand is, I mean, it's an island. I heard that no one is more than 60, 60 kilometers away from the water on average. So everyone is quite close. We go down to the harbor, we hang out, you know, throw rocks in there, just kind of talk, chill. And maybe around two or three, probably get some McDonald's. We like to do that a lot. And then, there's a mountain right in Wellington and it's called Mount Victoria and around maybe two or three we decided to start going all the way up there. It is a mountain. I mean you could easily walk up it but keep in mind this is two in the morning and it's really dark so we're not really going through the wooded areas but instead the spiraling kind of spiraling road that goes all the way up. So take the road about halfway up I'm like, yeah, this is like, you know, we can do this, but it's a little difficult. She goes, well, you want to hitchhike? I'm like, uh, I've never really done that before. And just to give you some context, hitchhiking is just very popular in New Zealand. I met a Kiwi there and they were telling me, honestly, that it was so popular, especially maybe 20 years ago, still today, but even more so 20 years ago, that if he missed the school bus, his mom was like, just go outside, put your thumb out. Someone will drive you because everybody knows each other in New Zealand. It's kind of a blanket statement, but it's it's pretty true. So we put out our thumbs. This guy stops by. He's like, where are you going? We're like, well, we're going up. He's like, well, you know, I live over here, so I can drive you up. We get in the car, both sit in the back. Super nice guy. Whatever we talked about, that was our way to get up. So we find our way up there 
and I think our thought was we wanted to watch the sunrise. Remember, I woke up at 7 a.m. Right now it's about 5 a.m. That's almost a day in and of itself. The problem was that I couldn't see the sunrise because I needed to get from the mountain, down the mountain, cross all these roads and get to the harbor or past the harbor to get to the train station. Take the train back up and then drive over to my house, drop the car off because around 7 a.m. is when my, my host family needed the car for whatever reason. I never got to see the sunrise. And the way that I am, I kind of waited until the last moment to be like, all right, Google Maps is saying it's gonna take 30 minutes to walk. I could run that in 20. I'll show you a picture. I'll put it up over here of what it looks like from Mount Victoria. So you guys can kind of follow along with this. And I had to go from here, wherever it is, where I'm looking, where the picture's taken. And I'll try and put a star over where I needed to run down to. The distance was this far. I honestly did that and maybe 15 minutes. It's all downhill, but I just ran. So at this point, I don't even know how many steps I had on my watch. It was probably un unprecedented. I get down there, take the train up, drive it over to my parents, give them the car. At this point, I've been awake for 24 hours, but wait, <laughs> I'm still gonna be awake for pretty much another day. You might be asking, what is he gonna be doing? Well, of course, with this uh, girl, Leah, like I said, we've kind of really bonded over the last 30 days. And if you want to hear about kind of bonding and how fast people can become friends, check out this episode right here. Maybe drop a like. Uh, it's a different friend, but also in New Zealand who I met. And over the course of a year, we traveled pretty much the entire world. Check that video out. But back to the point, what we ended up doing was I need to go back down to Wellington, about an hour train ride, so I can get a tattoo with this girl. Now it's not matching tattoos, but we decided to go together. That would be a cool experience. So this time though, my parents had the car, so what am I to do? I needed to walk to the train station, which I'll put the distance right here for you guys. That's about hour plus walk. I had to walk there, take the train down, and then walk to the tattoo parlor. So we're talking like, I don't even know how long that took. Super long, I had to be there by, let's say noon. All right, I do my whole journey, get down there, meet up with Leah. The tattoos we got by this apprentice, which in retrospect, not the best idea, but the ones I got were super easy. And I thought, hey, give it to the apprentice. It's good practice. I ended up getting them touched up later on. We get her tattoos. We get there around noon. Probably don't get done until five. She needed to like redraw them up. We get her tattoos. The day's not over because this is in July, if I'm not mistaken, around the summer for us here in North America. But it's the winter in New Zealand because it's in the Southern Hemisphere. Fun fact, Wellington is the southernmost capital in the world, but it's not like super cold. So it's winter. And what my family decided to do, which was a fantastic idea, was have something called Christmas in July. Because in New Zealand, it's really warm. It doesn't really feel like this traditional Christmas. In fact, I went swimming on Christmas day. I would say the beach from where I lived was around that corner, like that distance, it was right there. We went, went out and, and swam. My family decided to have a Christmas in July. All my friends were invited, so that was fantastic. I was happy they did that. So it's five o'clock in Wellington the next day. What is this, like 30 something hours I've been awake? Now we have to go all the way back up to Parapar Umu where I live. We have to walk to my house. That whole process takes two hours, an hour for the train, an hour to walk. We grab some food and we start that day off the second day. We have the party, and this is a pretty fun party. My parents, my host parents, they're young, you know, they're mid thirties and they're hip, they're cool. They invited all their friends over. I invited all my friends over. It was this big mash, mashup of just, I mean, there are different ages, but it was fantastic. It was fluid. We all hung out with each other. So we have all our friends over, we're doing our thing. Time just flies by, you know, we go to the beach, we hang out over there. We hang out at our house, play some drinking games, do whatnot. Before you know it, it's about, four o'clock in the morning. And if I have to be honest with you, wasn't even that tired. But I ended up going to sleep four o'clock Sunday morning. That would be 45 hours of being awake. It's the longest I've ever been awake. And that's the story. So I ended up partying twice in two days without going to sleep, something I've never done. Tattoo with someone I met only maybe a month, month and a half before that. I ran down a mountain and I walked, I, I couldn't even tell you, probably 50,000 steps, at least a marathon, and at least a marathon in those two days. 
that's the story of how I stayed up the longest. Well, that's a little slice of the pie of my life. Now, if you enjoyed it, you can give me a like down below and tell me the longest you've ever been awake for, because I'm pretty interested. If you want to check out my playlist of other videos similar, check out this one. And if you want to check out my most recent video, check out this one right here. All right, thanks a lot. Peace.